Hello, welcome to video number three in the series Hebrew Ivri Ewe Ebe the Black Man. My name is Seram Ajanku. In today's video, we will first review the Ewe Latin alphabet and then the Assyrian Aramaic Hebrew alphabet. It is important, I find, to learn both alphabets because the Old Testament books were translated into Aramaic language using the Assyrian Hebrew alphabet, the consonantal text. Although the text has retained its main ideas and messages, names of people, places, and things lost their correct pronunciations and meanings. But to the Eve people, these names are not lost at all because they speak the original language from which the names are derived. They speak the Ewe language, the ancient Hebrew. Next, we will analyze some biblical names and find their correct meanings and pronunciations in the Ewe language. Finally, we will discuss a cultural point, the Sabbath or Shabbat. Here is the Ewe Latin alphabet. This alphabet is made of 30 letters and five combination letters. Please review video number two for a lesson on the pronunciation if you need to. Remember that there is no letter J or letter C in this alphabet. Here we have the Assyrian Aramaic Hebrew alphabet. This is the alphabet without vowels. It's different from the Masoretic text, which has dots and bars to indicate vowels. I'll read it from right to left. Let me find my pointer and I'll read, show you. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav, Zain, Chet, Tet. Yod, Kaf, this is the final form of Kaf, Lamed, Mem, final form of Mem, Nu, Nu, this is the final form of Nu, Samek, Ai, Pe, Ofe, final form of Pe, Ofe, Tadi, final form of Tadi, Kof, Resh, Shin or Sin and Tav. Now think of the Vav. This is the Vav right here. Think of the Vav also as the letter W because it also doubles up as, as Wow and the every letter V, V, which is this character right here. Okay. Let's get into some names. Let's look at the names of Jesse and Joshua. Strong's H3448 pronounces Jesse as Yeshai, Yeshai. The consonantal biblical Hebrew text has it as Yod Shin Yod, which is Y S H Y, Yeshi, Yeshi. The meaning given it is I possess. They said Jesse means I possess. In Ebe, YSHY stands for Yashi. The Ya is representative of Yahweh or Yud He Vav He. So Yahweh, She, which means hand of Yahweh or hand of God. Contextually, the Bible tells us that Jesse, or Yashi, was the father of King David. David, we already know the Ewe name is Devi, which means child or youngster. And the Bible tells us that David was the youngest of his brethren. For the fact that Yashi was the father of David, who also uh, became the uh, ancestor of Yesu, uh, he indeed was used by the Most High. So we can say that Yashi was indeed 
the uh, hand of the Most High to bring prophecy to pass. Now, Joshua. It is found in Strong's H 3091 and pronounced there as Yehoshua. Yehoshua. In the consonantal text, it is written Yod, He, Vav, Shin, Vav, Ein, which is Y H V or V. Remember, when you see the Vav, sometimes it is actually the V or it could be the W, but in this case, we know it's V because we can see already that the name Joshua or Yehoshua is a two part name. The first part has the name of the Most High, which is the Yud He Vav. It's missing the He, but the reader is understanding that it is the name of Yahweh. So you have the first part is the name of the Most High, and the second part of the of the name is, is uh, the S H W A or Shin Wow Ein. All right, Shin Wow Ein, or the Ein could also uh, be an all sound. It really can represent any vowel at this point. So it is transliterated to mean Jehovah is salvation. Transliterated to mean Jehovah is salvation. In Ebe, we read Yahweh, she wo. Yahweh, she wo. And that means the hand of Yahweh has performed it, or to signify the executive hand of God. This is the same name as Yeshua, which is the executive hand of God. Yeshua is the executive hand of God, which performs his bidding. Jacob and Esau. Jacob is pronounced in Strong's H3290 as Yaakobi, Yaakobi, and written in the consonantal text Yod Ein Kof Bet. That is Y-A-K-B. The modern Hebrew transliterated this name to mean surplanter or heel grabber. What does the Bible text say? Genesis 25, 26 says, And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. Nothing in the text suggests supplanter or heel grabber as the interpretation of the name. Let's look at why a KB in Eve, and let's look at the context and culture. Context, Jacob was the second born of twins. Although he, he reached out his hand first, he was the second of the two to come out of the womb. Biologically, when you have twins, the first one to come out is usually the bigger and stronger of the two. The last one is usually smaller and more feeble appearing. Now culture. Evers named their children according to circumstances surrounding the birth or according to what they would like to profess into the life of the child. As the last born of twins, the weaker and helpless looking one, Jacob's parents would want to profess good things into his life, such as protection. In Eve, Yakobe. Yakobe. Ya stands for Yabe, which is Yud He Vav He, God. Ya. Yakobe means Yahve will hide you or God will protect you. So Jacob is actually Yakobe. His parents, Isaac and Rebecca, would have wanted to name their son this in order to invoke God's protection over him. It is highly unlikely that they would have named him supplanter or heel grabber. It simply doesn't fit the narrative nor the culture. 
Jacob means Yaakob, which is Yahweh will hide you or God will protect you. Now, let's take a look at Esau. Strong's H6215 pronounces it as Asav, Asav. It is written in the consonantal text as Ain Sin Vav or ESW. And the modern Hebrew transliterated it as Harry. Genesis 25, 25 says, and the first came out red all over, uh, all over, uh, came out red all over like an hairy garment. And they called him Esau. In every and in context with the story, ESW stands for Esau, which means horse pelt. Horse pelt. See, Holali Togbe Wonyo's explanation of Esau. It also stands for Esau, or actually Esau, Esau, which means he is perfect. He is perfect. So Esau's name has two meanings. It means horse pelt, which indicates that he's hairy, and it also means he is perfect. Remember, he is the first of twins to come out so the more robust and healthy strong looking one so the parents would have seen and uh, and uh, he, they would have said that he's perfect also when the text when the biblical text says that he came out red keep in mind that in every culture anyone who is fair skinned is referred to as red that is the norm. They, they, we say I'm a Jane. I'm a Jane. That means a red person. Anyone who is fair skinned. So this text tells us that Esau was fair skinned. He was hairy. And he was perfect looking as a young boy. Jacob and Esau or Esau or Esau are simply some of several names which the parents would have named their children. There are so many names they would have given them. Now let's take a look at the name Judah. According to Strong's H 3061, it is pronounced Yehud, Yehud. It is written in the consonantal text as yud he fav dalet or Y-H Vav or V D Y H V D. This is a two part name, as you can see. You can see the first part represents God, which is the Yud He Vav. It represents Yahweh. The second part of the name is represented by a single letter, the D. The modern Hebrew does not have a meaning for this name. The meaning ascribed to it is simply the land of Judah or the nation of Judah. And I would say they were pretty close. And this is why. Let's look at it in every. The first part of the name is YHV or Yudhe Vav, which I would like to say YHV, Yehav, okay, which stands for Yahweh. All right, so that's the name of God. The second part of the name, which simply represented by the letter D, is effortlessly discerned in the every language. The D stands for do. Do is the every word for nation. Do or duko. The correct pronunciation of the name Judah is ya do or yave do. Let's take a look at a Bible passage in which Jacob or Jacob blesses his son Yadu. Genesis 49 verse 8 to 12 reads, Judah, thou at whom thy brethren shall praise, thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies, thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's wealth. Wealth. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion and as an old lion. 
who shall rise, rouse him up. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his teeth, his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his fall unto the, vial, the vine, and his asses colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth with milk, his teeth white with milk. This is the blessing which Jacob blessed his son Yadu. So the name of Judah was closely transliterated to be the land of Judah or the nation of Judah. And this is quite accurate because the ever meaning is Yadu, which is Yahweh's nation, the nation of God. We have arrived at our cultural point for today. The cultural point is the Sabbath or Shabbat. It is found in Strong's H 7676 and pronounced there as Shabbat, Shabbat. It is written in the consonantal text as Shin Bet Tav. That's S-H-B-T, Shabbat, if you were to pronounce it without vowel, vowels. According to the Dictionary of Etym Etymology, it is derived from the Spanish word Sabado, which simply means Saturday. And it saw, it, it, is, it, was, um, it saw its earliest use as rest in the late 14th century. So it wasn't referred to as rest until the late 14th century. So the word is Spanish and it is Sabado. In Ever, there is no meaning for Sabado. It is not an Ever word. Uh, the Ever word for Saturday is Mamledagbe. Mamledagbe. Or others pronounce it Memledagbe. Memledagbe. Mamle, mamle in Ewe means last. Mamle means last and Dagbe means day. Mamle Dagbe means last day. Now, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11, we uh, read about the Sabbath day and God's command of keeping it. And remember that this is actually one of the forever commands. So we are commanded to keep the Sabbath day forever. That is not to change. Now let's read the scripture. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou, thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thou, thy son nor thy daughter thy manservants, nor thy maidservants, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So this is the, the command to keep the Sabbath. Now let's look at the culture, the Ewe culture. Traditionally, the Mamledag day is kept as a special day, the day of rest in which no work is done. Prior to colonization and the imposition of Catholicism and other religions, the Ewe people worshipped on the Mamledag day, Saturday. Some worshipped Yahweh, the Most High God. Uh, who is also known as Mau or Mauga, and others unfortunately worshipped various other deities, lesser gods. It was done all together on Saturday, Mamledagbe. Spears writes in the Ever People of German Togoland, the weekly worship takes place on Saturday. Also, according to Spears, the priest of Mao separates himself from his wife or women 
beginning Friday evening through the end of Saturday. He abstains from any unclean thing for this purpose. He goes through a ritual washing with water from a divine bowl, which he calls water of God. Then he enters a hut, which is set apart for the worship of Mao and remains there to commune with Mao until sunset. We find this in Spears page 467 to 468. Spears does not go into detail about what happens in the Mao hut, but perhaps that is because the priest does not tell him all, nor does he let him see what transpires as he covers the entrance to the hut with a white cloth. This is similar to the curtain of the tabernacle of Moses, which serves to prevent others from looking inside. In fact, the enclosure of the place dedicated to the worship of Mau mirrors the biblical tabernacle. In the enclosure, the divine vessel of purification is set in the front, in the front of the uh, sacred hut where the priest meets with Mau Yahweh on the Mamle Dagbe. The only item not mentioned in Spears' description is the altar of burnt offerings. However, we know that the offering is performed because Spears alludes to it when he states, the time of offering the sacrifice to Mao falls on the transition of the afternoon to the evening. So the actual word for the day called Sabado or Shabbat is Mamledagbe simply because it is the last day and it is the day set apart on which the priest of Yahweh, Mauga, meets with him in the divine hut or tabernacle. Mamle Dagbe. I would like to share with you the ironic blessing in Eve, the Eve language, which is the ancient Hebrew. But first, here it is in English. Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 to 27. This is the King James Version. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Here is the blessing in the ancient Hebrew, the Eve language. Mose pagba lenelia, ta de, cho kupui blave vuve, vasere blave vuadre, ta nyan, nasire utowu muse, e yehu akunu kule mose bena, glona aron, Plevia unto awobe. Ale mi ayira Israel view aglo nawu enyesi. Yeho ayira o ewa podju. Yeho a konkumede o ewa venu. Yeho a tromode bo ewa naunti fafao. Ale wa yon yunko ato de Israel view e ma yira o. Amen. That concludes today's lesson. Now, I would like to say, we are in very strange times. Here is some advice to protect us all from COVID-19. Heed the instructions and wash your hands often and stay home. Mend your walk with Yahweh, the Most High God, and know Yesu, if you haven't yet done so. Anoint yourself and your household with oil, olive oil. Even smear some anointing oil on your doorpost. Read Exodus 12. Pray with Psalm 91 daily. This is my mother's recipe to boost your immune system. Here are the references which I use for today's lesson. If you are interested in reading an Ebe Bible, the link is posted right here on the reference page. Thank you very much and God bless you. Mau Nairawu.